lot of people go through life doing things badly. Racing's important to men who do it well. When you're racing, it, it's life. Anything that happens before or after, it's just waiting. Matt Williams got a brilliant start from the third row of the grid. He's gone, he's hit him, he's straight off at the chase. And half second, lead over the center and cut in the background. He has it. Oh, he's round, he's round, he's round on the last lap. There's a massive, massive accident. Next to the inside, what a move, what a move. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new series. Uh, we're here with one of our Blister Australia's Group A Touring Car Championship, based on cars from the Group A era, late 80s, early 90s. Uh, I'm Chris Riddell, and with me, as always, Michael Zalavari. Floody, good um, evening. Good evening, Kiwi Chris. Good evening, everyone, and welcome, yes, as we said, to a brand new series. Uh, this mod has been built out of an old Group A mod, uh, very much uh, thanks to Brock Harvey, for putting this together and based on what we've seen so far this series is going to be so much fun so much fun <laughs> not wrong about that of course we're here for round one at calder park raceway we've seen this track before plenty of times uh tonight we're racing the full variant of it if i can find the track map there we go that button so yeah 10 corners 2.4 kilometers uh it's just going to be the one race tonight of 50 minutes. Um, really straightforward track on paper, but there's a lot to it. Yeah, it's one of those uh, tracks that has a lot of little features that makes it uh, much more difficult than meets the eye. Um, that gentle rise between the two chicanes as well adds another thing to it. But I think the, the biggest point of difference uh, that we're going to have tonight is of course the brand new machines, the brand new cars, because mm. the new cars are really throwing a spanner in the works tonight with how people, how difficult people are finding them. Yeah. Well, um, I've got a slideshow of the cars which we'll pull up now. So, Group A. What was Group A? Uh, Group A was a touring. Well, it was a a FIA production derived class, right? Uh, yeah. A, a yeah a production derived class that featured a lot of like late 80s sedan type vehicles i'm, I'm not really too, all that familiar with it because it was a little before my time so i think you need to really take the to, the lead on this one okay so yeah group a you like me late 80s early 90s production based um and so some so you have things like the holden commodore the bmw m3 was a big one um the ford escort the ford cosworth you're going to see plenty of those in the field tonight. Um, M3s, as I mentioned. The Holden Commodore, the uh, earlier versions of that. Um, also, Group Group A, as well as the uh, Ford Escort, which and raced quite a lot in Australia. We've got a, also, I think, a Nissan in the field, a Nissan the, Skyline. Of course, of course, the Nissan Skyline, which everyone knows very well from Bathurst and in the hands of Jim Richards. And as I think my favourite car of the group, uh, actually, I, I think my, my favorite cars of the group are a trio of uh, European machines. Um, we've got the, the BMW M3, which I mm -hmm. think is one of the favorite little pocket rockets of that group. Mm -hmm. uh, the Mercedes one, I think it's the 130R. 190, the, 190 E. 190, yep. 190, 190 e. e, that's the one. Which is a um, car we and, didn't really see in Australia much, but the race DCM was its home. Yep. Uh, and I think one of my favorite cars in this group um maybe maybe a bit for the meme uh the volvo 240t <laughs> yes. what a beautiful beautiful brick <laughs> yes but hey the beautiful brick works <laughs> yes yes indeed it does um we've got a, a wide variety here i think we mm. have we've got 25 drivers in the server currently they're currently just going through their drivers briefing after practice uh so a massive massive field mm. we've got i think every single car in the mod represented so we've got the uh the hsv uh commodore the nissan the skyline um uh, the mercedes uh, the volvo an older commodore as well i think one of the late 80s commodores the ford cosworth uh and uh i think we've got one mercedes and one or two bmws so every mm. every box is ticked tonight which yeah. is really exciting and we've got a good mix of historic liveries and more 
interpretive takes on liveries and more fan, you know just creative ones but there's a lot of um historic divide runs like the uh, old tony longhurst m3 is represented here mm, yep. the old uh peter jackson car is represented beautifully by cam rutledge um there's the old caltex car i love that we're gonna see that yeah out it's beautiful it's beautiful mm. what pe and what people have done as well is just been an absolute joy to see what people have come up with and how they put it together and the the skill in this group not just their driving skill which we've seen a massive improvement um over the past uh, few series but also the the creative skill as well it's really touching to see um everyone kind of come together and produce these works of art really yeah and we're gonna see these guys race over a 12 race calendar uh, starting all Australian New Zealand based, as you'd expect for a mod of this type. Round one tonight, Cotter Park Raceway, then pretty much bi weekly for most rounds, there's a couple back to back. Heading all around the country, Simmons Plains, Winton, Pukekohe, the next three. Going back to Adelaide for the GP layout, which is fantastic in mid August. Um, Lakeside Park, which I know you're excited for. Yes. And then Hidden Valley, Sandown, Sydney Motorsport Park, or Eastern Creek, as we should be correct, period correct by calling it. And then Oran Park, and of course the Mountain to finish, which is an enduro race. Yeah, quite unsurprising. Um, Yeah, the one that really sticks out for me is Lakeside, because up until about two or three months ago, I'd never seen a race at Lakeside. I actually uh, went and found an old, like one of the original V8 Supercars races, I think from the 90s or 94 season at lakeside and that track is looks like an absolute bull ring and in these cars which are very uh powerful very slippy and awful braking machines <laughs> it's gonna yes. be an absolute mess and i am so excited <laughs> yes so twitchy as well i noticed in my practice yeah. laps though you get on the power even a moment too soon your car's going the other way around exactly right so it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see these are, these cars are such a big departure from mm. everything else we've raced even tcic retro they're so different to the tcic retro cars so uh it's it's something very different to what we've seen previously in tcic something very different to what has been raced in ams oz and something very different to what i think a lot of people have expected so it's be it'll be really interesting to see who copes the best with the uh with the different cars and the difficult cars it, that it will um as you mentioned we've got 20 what 25 drivers in lobby at the moment yep absolute crazy turnout for the first round some names here that might be unfamiliar uh scotty g haven't seen him for a while good to see him back uh who's w was -er? uh wayne was a spencer um he is oh, yes. an ams oz driver uh racing in gt3 and supercars at the moment um he races the af corsa um ferrari 488 in the gt3 series and had a decent run out last night mm -hmm. oh excellent uh mclean is a name i don't recognize from captain slow racing driving the hsv yeah that's not a name i've uh, encountered before either so uh interesting to see how he goes this evening mm -hmm. um his name is Lynette McLean, and he's driving one of the Caltex HSVs. So look to the number 77 car for that mm -hmm. one. Yep. Also got uh, the usual names, you know, SSR with the usual Hobson, Nolan, Rasmussen, Triumvirate. Yeah, this will be yep. good for this time of night. Uh, Matty Schwoss. There's another new name for some of you, but he's been around a bit, I believe. Yes, he's also been racing in the GT3 series uh, that had its second to last round last night. Um, amazing round last night, by the way, at Monza. Uh, came down to the last lap for overall honours, so very, very exciting if you want to go back and catch that. Um, but yeah, Matt Swash, uh racing with, uh, I think, Steve Bolger's team, Steve mm -hmm. Bolger and Osrob in that group of uh, three. Yep. Um, and he's stepping into the Brunswick uh, team for this championship, him and Hans, who we've become familiar with over the past few rounds. Fantastic. So we're not far away from getting underway with qualifying here. Uh, if I don't leave the track, that would be a dumb thing to do. Uh, so we're going to take a quick break and we'll be um, back with you in a moment.
And we are back. Just moments away from qualifying getting underway. Uh, but as we talked about ATCC, the Group A cars, late 80s, early 90s, some of the greats of Australian motorsport have done incredibly well in these cars. You've done a bit of digging, I believe, Flood. Yes, um, looking at the Calder Park Raceway rounds of Group A, they raced here four times in the past, from 1985 to 1988. Um, and uh, we had four different round winners at Quarter Park, actually. So, unsurprisingly, Jim Richards was one of them. Uh, he won the first round, the first time we came here in 1985, in the seat of the JPS Team BMW cast, that beautiful uh, black and gold uh, liveried machine. Um, and then it was uh, the year afterwards, it was, oh, whereabouts has it gone? Um, it was George Fury in the Peter Jackson Nissan racing cars. Uh, There's a name. Yeah, George Fury. That I have not actually ever heard of George Fury before. Um, but he uh, won the rally championship twi uh, twice and was a runner-up in the Australian Touring Car Championship twice. So uh, pretty good results for him. Um, and Darian then... as well. Oh, wow. Uh, no way. That's crazy. Um. Now, if I was to, to say, who would you guess in that era won the next two rounds uh, of uh, Calder Park? Um, remember, this is late 80s, early 90s. Who would you say? Um, remember, we've already had Jim Richards and uh, George Fury. Yep. Oh, it have to be Mr. Johnson, wouldn't it? Uh, yes. He won in 1988 mm -hmm. in the Ford Sierra. Who else was bigger around there? Uh, Glenn Seaton? Yes. Wow, you bring, you no scope both of them. Well done. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so Glenn Seaton and, uh, and Dick Johnson. Uh, Dick Johnson did it in the year where Ford Sierra won literally every round uh, in 1988, which was unsurprising. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, Glenn Seaton did it on the opening round of the 1987 season uh, in the Nissan Skyline. Wow! How did you how did you no scope both of those? God damn! Just that's just complete guess. <laughs> the, you know, then Seaton. I mean, this was his this was his time, and Dick yeah, Johnson, exactly. obviously. As we just see the cars coming out seven wide in the pit lane for ready for qualifying. This will, this will end well. Uh, so just like this is a ten minute qualifying session. Uh, is it just going to be? So you're best I think it's just a free minutes? for all. Yeah, so yeah. I think it's just a free for all. So. Good luck trying to track this if you're at home. If you are at home and wanting wanting to track live timing, there is live timing on uh, live races, amsoz.liveraces.com. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find the... Oh, as we've already got someone turned around at the first corner, thanks to someone missing their braking zone. Yeah, that was Glenn Wilde was going around in the Turmo Engineering Skyline. He did get a little bit of help. He um, did. But yeah, this is going to be a... A terrifying prospect with all these cars coming through uh, mm -hmm. in quick fashion. Um, so yeah, watch the braking zone into turn one. Uh, the braking into turn Ooh. one is going to be very, very difficult. I think you and I found that to be the case throughout yep. the evening. I'm just trying to find a car that's hitting the end there. It's not proving easy. Uh, anyone? Anyone on a hot lap? There we go. Cam Rutledge, you'll do. In the number 30 Peter Jackson machine. Oh yeah, that's uh, very reminiscent. As we're coming into turn one, that braking zone for turn one is so tricky. I was braking at the T sac line we were using, and I was shooting off into the drag strip. Yeah, it's it's uh, the brakes on these cars are almost non-existent, so you really Ooh. have to brake a lot earlier than you expect. We saw um, one of the so, Curie Motorsport cars going off in the background of that shot as well. I think that was Matty Schwass because I've got eyes on Hans, and he's going very gingerly through the chicane. Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of cars on track at the moment as well. There's a lot going on. I think we've got something like 20 of the 26 cars out on track at the moment. Uh, um, yeah. So, now we saw in, we saw in practice the fast guys were dipping below into the 59s. Yeah, just. Mm. So it's going to be very quick and pretty much your timing sector. Sector two is just on the entry to that last corner. So, and the first sector is just out of the flip flop chicane. So it's Cameron Rutledge coming across the line with a 59.943. That's a great wow. first gamut. Straight away into the yeah. 59s. Huge from Cam Rutledge. Um, Lime Mitch and Hans have set laps. Lime Mitch uh, closer to the pace than Hans was. Hans must have made a mistake there. Mm -hmm. um, I am 
bra tracking Brendan Ross. He jumps into uh, the 101s, point mm -hmm. four. I'm currently um, currently got eyes on Rody, uh, who driving his customary number ten. He, of course, he's sponsored by Penrite. Just coming through to the wood, the endurance check bend, as we called it last time around. He's two and a half tenths down, coming through the final sector. So this should put him around tenth place at the moment as he comes across the line with a one hundred two four five five. Yep, tenth place. We're going to have a bit of trouble getting used to all these new liveries because I am getting lost already and there's so many of them. Mm -hmm. um, um, I'm just I'm trying to find someone on a quick lap. Uh, Adam Kerrison, I believe, is on a quick lap, but he's running into traffic in the meme vol, in the Volvo dealer team entry, which does look very, very nice. Those of you who follow supercars will remember the Gary Rogers throwback liveries. Yeah, and I think we've got the Synergy Sim Racing Armada uh, trying their hand at some quick laps. Not really seen uh, anyone get close to Cam Rutledge's time yet. He is a good half a second ahead of the rest of the field on what was his first flyer. So he's really, uh, you know, set the set the marker. Um, Synergy Sim Racing guys haven't really set a lap in anger yet. They were also in the twenty, uh, sorry, the fifty nines in practice. So we would expect them to get there again. And one thing we notice in, in practice, the track limits here are razor thin. Yeah, especially through that far chicane, as I was just caught Scotty G being in the final sector. Mm -hmm. uh, very easy to do in these cars. Yep, I've got eyes on Hobson now. He's eight one hundredths down through the first sector, but he's got the number 30 Peter Jackson machine ahead of him. That's Cam Rutledge. Yep, that's the old Glen Seaton livery, for those who are playing along at home. And he's, now, he's now three tenths down. So that's still going to be a decent qualifying result. It was has gotten into second place, I've noticed. Yeah, Wayne, uh, coming off a good result last night. He's jumped up into second. Hobbo's going to cross the line and take that position from him into second. Mm -hmm. Currently still Cam uh, Rutledge, best of a time, one, one minute, point nine two. Oh, no. That's last lap. 59.943 for Cam Rutledge. Ooh! <laughs> As we see, Hobson just outbreak himself into turn one massively. And he'll go back to the pit lane and start again. Matty Cecil yet to set a time. The AP Motorsport machine still still on his outlap. Uh, then, oh, I think Glenn Miles has just cleaned someone up in the first corner just quietly. Okay, where's he, he at? Completely missed his braking zone. Oh no, he went wide and someone else is already off. So okay. that's why they made that's contact fine. there. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. We can deal with that. As we Rock go, Harvey has yep. just finished his hot lap to slot into ninth. Yep, I've uh, just got Termo, one of the quicker guys from practice, just about to start his hot lap in the Castro Racing Machine with Apple on the back. They did sponsor racing cars in the 80s. It's I don't definitely think it, a thing. I don't think it was an iPhone, though. Yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> yeah. He got a bit squirrely out of turn one, so this might be a bit of a throwaway lap. We'll see what his first sector time is. And he's a second down, but the way qualifying is going at the moment, that might not be too bad. He might stay, He'll stay with it. Through the flip-flop, very wide and onto the grass. As you see, who's that behind him? Luke Joyner, I think that was, getting on two wheels in the Volvo. The brightly coloured Volvo. Turmo just coming through the the slow chicane, coming through to, yeah, two seconds down. He'll go again. Uh, is, is, I believe he's the only person there to set a time. Um, there is a few that, uh, I think a few just finished their first laps as well. So yeah. it just, we've already seven minutes through this session. So it's gone extremely quick, uh, mm -hmm. has this qualifying session. Um, still, I think it is Cam Rutledge on pole, uh, provisionally. Yeah, it is. Um, I'm, ha I'm having a little trouble with my live races uh, not updating. So um, makes it a little difficult to see where we are at the minute. Um, but he's still the only one in the 59s. Um, Hobbo is immediately behind him on track and is in fact trying to use the draft coming through to the slow uh, slow section. Mm -hmm. um, but he was a little bit down on his lap to the first sector. So we'll see how he goes. He rides all the Oz way Rob. over the curb. Oh, someone's off in the background behind Hobbo. Yep, I was just saying, Ozrob's actually gone up to second. As we I had eyes on line, Mitch, he's gone up. Oh, as I was parked, he's obviously very happy with his one minute point one two eight. Great time from Oz Rob. And Hobbo's going to cross the line. the line. No improvement. Still third with 1 minute 0.238.
So not a lot of people improving at this stage, um, which is a little surprising because I would have thought that as people get more in tune with the track, they will be able to to get uh, to wind into those good times. But it seems like everyone's been able to set that that first time that's really um, been the benchmark. Uh, so it's currently oh actually hobo is up on his personal best uh, okay. by two hundredths of a second just coming through to the far chicane now yep uh yellow flag briefly showing but i think that's okay coming through to the set slow chicane the sector time here will be very telling because after this it's just all about getting power to the ground Ooh, that looked very nice and he's up 1.6 uh sorry yeah 1.1 1 .1 on his time but 0.1 behind the pole time. So can he get the drive out of this corner and get into the 59s? Brenton Hobson can cross the line. 59.9. 59.9, four hundredths of a second <laughs> behind Cam Rutledge. Who's just come across so, the line at one minute point nine. Very, very close between the pair of them at the mm. moment. I'm surprised that Scott Nolan hasn't been able to set a 59 yet. He was also in the 59s and he's looking very, very close at the time currently he's in ninth place coming through the final corner half a second up on his pb 400 outside the pole time as he comes to the line to set a 59.97 he's gone between hobson and rutledge <laughs> there was no how there was no room there to go between I think that's what i thought has he done that i'm uh, just keeping wow. on Ho so hobson now Coming through this, coming through to the final corner, he's three seconds down, so he's going to have one more go at it. Cam Rutledge yes, has gone wide. Fifty-seven seconds left in this session, so uh, I think we're actually not going to see a representative time from Termo because he's just had a, an incident on the back straight, and unless he's able to get it back around, he's going to uh, not get a, a lap in. Okay, Cam Rutledge was the first of the of this trio across the line, so he'll be the first to set his final lap. Coming through turn one. Looking a bit ginger, I've got to say. And it, Hobbo's got a round in front of him. Oh, just managed to sneak through, but that's probably ruined Rutledge's lap. Well, um, Scott Nolan is just coming to the line again. He's green to the final sector mark. I'm going to keep eyes on him as he crosses the line. And Devonish goes to the top, but Nolan goes to the top <laughs> as well. 59-7. <laughs> oh, Hobson will be kicking himself. He broke himself into turn one. So, yeah, Devonish hit a 59-8. To go into the lead, and then immediately, uh, Hobbs, uh, sorry, Nolan went to the top. So uh, it's going to be. I think they both got one lap left, but I'm not sure that Devonish or Nolan's improving. Devonish is not. Rutledge is in the pits. It's not looking like anyone might have the pace to tackle that current time at the top of the field. Let's see to the second sector mark here. Will Devonish in that striking white Mercedes? Yes, as I'm just looking at Nolan. He's got a bit of grass, but it looks like he's going to get pole position from this one. Yeah, Devonish yeah. two tenths down on his PB and the pole time coming down to the main straight. I think everyone else is in the pits. Mm -hmm. This is just a glory run for Scotty Nolan, who's going to... Yeah, he's not even pushing anymore across the line, but 59.759 pole position, Scotty Nolan. Well done, sir. Second place will be Will Devonish in the Devonish team Mercedes. There's a lot of O's. There's a lot of O's. A lot of O's. Yes. Third third place on the grid will be Cam Rutledge in the uh, Sierra. Fourth place, Brenton Hobson in the SSR Commodore. Fifth place will be Osrob, who's driving the Nissan tonight, the Norton Hornet. I think that's a modern Norton Hornet. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, sixth place will be Damien Rasmussen in the 221 from Cindy Sim Racing. There's a Skyline. Is that a Skyline? I think that's the H. No, that's the HSV. I, I don't know. These, the yeah, HSV. I think that's the HSV. Yep. Lime Mitch is driving his puke mobile. Seriously, it's... I think we'll we'll have a bit of a chance to go through them all on the grid yeah. in, in a bit more detail. Yeah. Um. But yeah, and then it's the top red, and then the game freezes. Yep, and so we're advancing through the warm up now. So we might see a few people practice the pit in, which will be very very difficult. Uh, with brakes that they have on these cars and maybe even the pit out as well because that's a, a tight uh, run into the uh, into the racetrack really as you exit the pits here so woof, what a session what a way Ooh, to start that was, that was fantastic 
A lot to keep up with when you got 27 cars, 10 minutes on a tight track like that, but that was a lot of fun. Yeah, and this is a bit, a bit new as well that we got mm. these this many cars uh, and uh, yeah, so many different drivers. It's just it's just a lot to keep up with. Yep. Um, I'm just going to check the drivers up again on uh, on stream on the cards as we talk about it. But what a lap! What a session! Um, it's going to be a crazy race. Is there anyone there that you think's out of position? Um, I think Termo. Termo is mm. the big one for me because he did not get a lap together. I saw him on his final flying lap spin it to the inside out of the final sorry the far chicane and he is down in 23rd position so not a good lap time for him um mm. so i think that's going to be the big uh the big one that we're going to have to keep eyes on um yep uh we've got uh Rody at the tail end field which is unsurprising um one thing with Rody, got, keep an eye on Rody because he's going apparently Got it going back to his eight shift gearbox, so he could oh. be that could be chaos off the start line. Um, I think Scott Morrill as well. He's down in I think uh, that looks like fifteenth ish. So that's a, a little bit of a um, uh, maybe a detriment to where he wanted to be. Mm -hmm. um, oh, actually, I don't think the the live races results I've got are actually fully up to date because it doesn't show those last few laps. So live races is is having a bit of a time at the moment. So we're trying to run as as kind of close as we can um but yeah there's just a bit something's going wrong with life races so um i guess we'll see on the grid where everyone is excellent uh, we just see drivers going through their warm-up you, you talked about the pit lane here it's got a high speed limit of 100 k's an hour but the pit lane is very long and you go shoot off at the final corner and it's quite easy yeah, to get it's the entry of, wrong yeah it's kind of reminiscent of like sonoma racetrack or uh for those who follow f1 montreal where instead of taking the corner and braking you're you're shooting off into the distance so um yeah it might be uh something to to watch out for is we're watching the likes of uh glenn miles not take the pit pits okay it looks like no one's trying to do the pit stops thing everyone's just trying to work out these cars um i think mm. why mitch is running the pits yeah a, a hundred kilometer speed limit as well so going back to the old uh, days. I think we've actually got a few people lining up for a practice start. So it looks like we've yep. got Rody, Wayne Rob Spencer, um, uh, Hans Brunswick, and I think that's John McDonald in the HP BMW. Mm -hmm. It might be. Why are, we, why are we starting three wide, boys? Just for fun. Yeah. Okay, I guess we'll wait for the... We'll see how these go. Who was Bloody that? Moral. <laughs> Bloody moral. <laughs> Bloody moral. Bloody <laughs> moral. And I think Rody forgot to go. Oh, that was that was unfortunate. Shall we try that again, guys? <laughs> oh wow! Well, that so was... that, that's kind of the attitude of people at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Um, we got a few doing practice starts on the exit of pit lane, so that'll be. That's my Mitch uh, going away a now. Bit better. Um. Well, we're going to Nathan. Our favourite F two driver got banned for something similar like that. Oh, really? Yeah, taking off from a practice start, and the guy ahead of him forgot, didn't go. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, and the, he got his second race banned for that. Oof. Not ideal. Not ideal. Uh, anyway, while, while we've got a moment, we should thank Brock for this mod. Thank you, Brock. He's put a Thank lot you. of effort into this, and the cars look amazing. It's going to be an amazing 10 race, 12 race series. Should also thank Netherial Man. If I said it right, uh, Netherelmian. Nether <laughs> there you go. Nether, yep. Nether, um, who's he's provided doing all the beautiful graphics tonight. Yep. So uh, Nether, who does all the the graphics for for us and for the uh, Super Two and the GT Three series, um, you can catch his stuff on Outlaw Broadcasting. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much, uh, Nether Steve DeFreeze. Mm-hmm. Um. And also should thank everybody for participating in this and for watching. Uh, this will be the last race on this channel, hopefully. Yes, fingers crossed. Um, we were meant to have this race as the debut of our new channel, but unfortunately YouTube did that thing that YouTube does where it doesn't let you do stuff. So we've had to yeah, put this uh, on our regular home of 
uh, short shift motorsport broadcast. Uh, so mm -hmm. thank you again to those guys for letting us use their um, their channel for this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, for for our broadcast. Yep. Um, Nathan Higgins has just posted in chat. He, Brock has two and a half years of type development in this. Yeah, um, I re remember him saying that to us when we were interviewing him prior to the start of the season. Uh, yeah, the tires are really um, something that, uh, yeah, really add, add a lot to the series because of the way that they, um, you know, they wear and they, uh, mm. they uh, do their behavior. And I, I, you can feel that the tires are really well worked um when you're when you're driving around so it doesn't ever feel like they're they're bricks or they're rocks or anything so mm. i think uh and they wear it at a, a really nice rate as well for these cars so i think we'll um see uh yeah the, the fruits of uh rocks labor in the tires uh yeah work work well for these cars absolutely i'm so excited um, Can we just... and i think we've got mike Coulston in the live chat as well um mm -hmm. We'll see. Hopefully, we'll see Mike make his way to the the race seat at some point. Fingers crossed. Yes, because twenty seven drivers is not enough. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. I think ACT in the ACTCC there were regular grids of 30, 30 plus. Well, yeah, because they're all production based, production mm. derived. You could almost buy one of these and build it into a car that you could compete with. Yeah, um, well, and, and cars they only had to make like five thousand of them, and that included oh, evolutions. Really? Yeah. Oh wow! Okay. So that's how the Sierra Cosworth got in, and the 190E things like that. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Yep. I just remember watching these cars go around like the Wellington Street Circuit, which is a track you'll know if you've watched racing in the 80s and 90s. And you still those races are still on YouTube, but like you got uh, the M3 of Tony Longhurst, Peter Brock's Commodore. The Sierra Cosworths of um, Dick Johnson and Emmanuel Piro at one point. Oh, really? When it's, w, when it's a World Touring Car Championship round. Oh, wow. And it's just great. Um, I think that was the year they got disqualified. I have to check. Ah, uh, was that uh, disqualified at Bathurst? Yes. Oh, it, the series have been disqualified quite a bit. <laughs> We've got quite a few drivers lining up for practice starts at the moment. I think it's Rody, Murrell, uh, I think that's uh, Cam Rutledge and Termo, I think. Mm -hmm. Rody got a massive jump hey. on that one. Uh, Scott Murrell, not so much. And I think <laughs> then they're playing a bit of cat and mouse down the main straight, just uh, having a bit of fun in the water. <laughs> Excellent. I'll bring that up. Brilliant. Bring, there we go. Oh, yes, we got the, oh, here we go. I've got to put that up in a replay, because why not? What else are we going to do in the, in the warm-up? Rallycross start. And away we go with Rallycross race one. And that would be a red flag if it was real Rallycross. Brilliant. <laughs> so you can see the sort of attitude and uh, type of racing, or the, the sort of feeling that you get in this series. It's all a lot of fun uh, but really good competition as well so yeah. if you ever want a sort of entry series into Automobilista AMS Oz uh, community TCAC if you can find a spot in it is a really good starting point um, and I think what other series are being run by uh, AMS Oz at the moment we have the, we've got our GT3 series which has got one round remaining before it moves to the sprint series mm -hmm. um, there's supercars and super two, uh, which is a nice way to get involved with the, you know, racing in the supercars. Um, and mm -hmm. there's there was a TCR series, but I think that's been finished up now. Um, yeah. And there's going to be Porsche Carrera Cup starting soon, but that's already reached maximum sign up. So uh, we might have to find a few more series to run to try and deal with so many people the, the grid sizes have just been astonishing uh, like as we mentioned 27 tonight it's crazy hey michael i've just been doing a little bit of research would you like well, that's to get, scary would you like to get your hands on a sierra cosworth at the moment in real uh, life for free yeah sure that way i can sell it and make them in uh as of the 15th of february there's one on sale in the uk for one hundred thirty-five thousand dollars. Hmm. Hmm. yeah that's a lot <laughs> Porsche Cup as well as the series that's coming up. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I mentioned. Porsche yeah. Carrera Cup or yeah. Porsche Cup or you know potato tomato. Um, 
that one I'm really excited for because I'll be doing commentary on that one as well. Uh, I think that'll be me and Lewis Wedding, uh, who does the a lot of the, the mods and the series administration for AMS Oz. So I'm really excited to do that with him. Are you saying and, you like Porsches or something? Oh uh, yeah, something like that. It's, you yeah. know, it's just a just a thing. It's the hobo starting coming up for one more practice start. And nope, nope he's one, one more quit. Uh, Mike, if you want to test drive that uh, Sierra Cosworth with me, that'd be fantastic. I'll pay you fifty cents. <laughs> uh, and I've just just gone back to McLean and the uh, number seventy seven Caltex Commodore. Uh, th those of you who remember retro rounds, uh, that's one that Lounsey has driven. Oh, yes, of course. Yes. It's a great livery as he just backs it into turn five. Spins it onto the curb. Yep. There's a lot of really cool liveries. We'll go through the mm. liveries, I think, a bit uh, more in depth as we come to the grid, even if, you know, even though we'll have to one through, run through them because it's 27 cars on this lap so what's the race format for tonight as we end this warm-up session uh according to the graphic we watched we saw at the start it's 50 minutes beautiful that's going to be a nice long uh race to sort of settle us into this uh yeah into this into this series yeah, yeah. so 10 minute quality uh 50 minute race mm -hmm. um for all rounds except for the enduro which will be uh bathurst of course yes uh, which is absolutely insane. It's going to be two and a half hours, I believe. Uh, maybe not two and a half hours. I think it's one and a half hours. And what, Either way, one and a half hours in these cars is going to be terrifying enough as it is. Yeah. I thought I saw 150 minutes. I could be wrong. I will have a quick look-see for you. 150 minutes, you are right. All right. Damn. <laughs> that is terrifying. That's that an enduro. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, the cars are slowly coming out onto grid now. So, as we get ready to buckle our seatbelts for race number one of a new championship, what are your predictions as I drop my can over myself? Right on me. Well done. Um, I think there'll be a crash at turn one, uh, and one of the Synergy Sim Racing cars will win. That That's my not bold prediction. Very bold. Oh, no, we just, we've uh, done something there. The server's reset. Not happy. Not happy, Janet. Who left their headlights up? Here we go again. Doesn't list that up. Oh, we have our Brock. Hey, Brock. What oh, the heck? <laughs> so what's, are we just having a bit of a server issue? Uh, we're waiting for Wayne Spencer, who I think dropped out of the server right at the last minute. So. Nah. Yeah. Oh. Damn. Now, I... Um, so, so, Brock, while we got you here... <laughs> oh, no, he's gone again. Classic. Well, I was going to say... Oh, he's you here. You got me? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> i got to figure out what that button is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just going to quickly ask you, uh, how does it feel to see all these cars now on track after working on it for quite a while? Oh, pretty good. Um, all I really worked on was the tyre. The, the mod is primarily the... Touring Car Legends mod from R Factor. Um, we just put a lot of effort into the tyre to make it AMS worthy because uh, AMS runs at 360 hertz, so um, as opposed to R Factor, which is 180 hertz. So it's kind of good. We get some nice feedback. We get some flat spots. You can you really can feel the pneumatic flex for the tyre. So you'll see guys being able to drive it. I guess as they did in the day with these kind of cars, a little bit more sideways than what some of the other cars could drive it. <laughs> yeah, you can say that again. Um, what was the logic behind uh, putting together a 150-minute race at Bathurst? Are you trying to kill people? I think it was supposed to be 1.5 hours. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that could have been just a mistype um, somewhere on the line. But hey, one, one hour 50, why not? <laughs> just work, give the guys a workout. <laughs> yeah. You get the commentators a workout. workout. And then some. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> we might need to call in ring-ins for that. Ah. Get Nether in. Nether knows what he's doing. <laughs> What yeah, he saying? would, he would, he would really enjoy that, it. That that'll make one person who knows what they're doing. Hey, fair enough. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I think. <laughs> Sorry, we'll let you get back to the grid. Thanks, mate. Good luck. Cheers. We'll see how we go. Eh? Yep. Yeah, I just say that again. <laughs> it's uh, gonna be funny because we got um, massively different performance uh, under braking into turn one. Um, so expect carnage. <laughs> Excellent.
counting on it. <laughs> okay, okay, so as the field grids up, what a colorful grid we've got here today as well. A lot of really cool liveries that will go through as they start their warm up lap. There we go. Yeah, oh, look at that. That is such a kaleidoscope. So your pole position will be, if I can get my camera to work, Scotty Nolan in the SSR number 18, Skyline. Second place will be Will Devonish in the Devonish. HSV. Hey? That was a HSV. HSV, sorry, yes. I'm getting my hair kind of HSV confused. My, I need my eyesight check. Second place, Will Devonish in the Mercedes. Third place, Cam Rutledge in the Sierra. Fourth place, Printon Hobson in the SSR number 88, HSV. Fifth place, Osrob driving a ring in Nissan for tonight. Sixth place will be Damien Rasmussen, the third of the SSR, SSR cars. Seventh place, Lime Mitch in that horrible looking thing. <laughs> you can't miss him, can you? No, no. Uh, eighth place is Wayne Spencer in the Spencer Racing number 50. I love that livery. Yeah, it's, it's nice and uh, period appropriate. Yes. Ninth place, Cracker in the Calibre Sierra. Uh, very, his, very true to histo history livery, that one. Tenth place... 10th place Gravel Rash Racing Steve Bolger in the BMW historic livery on that one that's Tony Longhurst one 11th place was Brendan Ross driving a ringer Merc for tonight 12th was Hans Brunswick in the Volvo 13th Adam Kerrison in the Volvo 14th Luke Joyner in the Dale Smith flooring number 7 Commodore 15th is Brock Harvey in the number 29 MHRT Commodore 16th is Matty Schwoss in the Volvo then we've got Brian Walsh, Scotty Murrell, Matty Cecil, John McDonald, Big Dog, Rody, Scotty G, Termo, McLean, Manuel Centino, and Glenn Moir was rounding out your 27 car grid. 27 cars. Oh, that's so terrifying. I, I had, can't. I had to speed up, uh, otherwise it, I was not going to get through the whole grid in time. Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, it's the, the head of the field is coming up to the grid now. Uh, what, very, something that's going to be very important here, not just the uh, the different braking performance, but also making sure you've got the, the tyre and brake temps up for that first corner because you, there's nothing worse than stepping on the brakes and feeling nothing happen. Uh, yes. So brake temps are going to be really important. Tyre temps are going to be really important. And surviving the first few laps is going to be really important in this 27-car grid. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to keep saying it. 27 cars. It's astonishing how many cars, how many people have turned up for this the first race of AMSR's ATCC uh, run by TCAC. Yes, it's going to be a fantastic race. We hope you look forward to it and enjoy it. Uh, we're going to keep eyes on camera just for the start because I reckon he might be one of the big movers. As we're just waiting for the last trailers to film up now. And here we go. And we're away at Calder Park. Pretty good start from Cam Rutledge. Uh, the Merc went nowhere. And Cam is going to have a look around the outside to go for the lead of the race. Further back. Yeah. Ooh, that was the Calibre Sierra darting out. He's got the lead. Yeah, Cam Rutledge has the lead. But it's all the uh, SSR cars are on the inside here. It's the two Sierras into the lead now. They're breaking for turn one. There's a bit of buff, a bit of budge. And they all somehow managed to skate their way around turn one without too much of an issue, actually. I think only one car went wide through there but they all managed to get through and 27 cars have made it through the first sequence of corners and it's scott nolan who's taken the lead as we've got live match up to the third as well it looks like we've survived the first chicane quite well through the flip flop pretty good as well live mitch is going to have a look down the inside of the number 30 sierra to take second place as we go into this first chicane or third chicane and he's going to get the move done Wow, very uh, late on the brakes there from like we'll further oh, back in the background that was yep. hobson hobson went wide in the background as a cracker and that's allowed that entire group of cars to plow through. Hobson now down in 10th, and Crack. he's made a bit more contact as well. So a bit, a bit scrappy for Hobson in this new series. And someone, I think that is that Cracker who's yeah. had an awful run. He's dropped right down to the back. Oh, well, he was involved with that Hob incident with Hobson. Just got caught out, had to wait for the whole field to go past. He's came out in 25th. Oh no, what a shame for for Cracker after setting some great laps to begin with. But out front, end of first lap, Scotty Nolan ahead of Lime Mitch, ahead of Damien Rasmussen, who's just got the move done to Cam Rutledge, who's back into fourth after that cracking start. Fifth Ooh, okay, breathe. take a little bit of a breath. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Oz Rob's had a good, good move at the start as well, up to fifth place. Oh, and we just had John McDonald 
Uh, slide his way all through the chicane and he's returned back to the circuit in a mob of cars and he's been absolutely monstered by the group behind him but a little bit of a tap as well and Termo I think oh no we've got Will Devonish Will Devonish has had Ooh. a mistake yes I see Will Devonish going slow on the outside of everybody there um, I think he's he must have Ooh. that that looks like a, some sort of failure or something because he's he's dropping down the order like a stone but he looks like he's back up to pace. It must must have been something small that been, he's been able to rectify. Maybe something with his pedals or something. Yeah, I think he's yeah he's got okay. He just took a little while to get going. But whew. I take I was going to say a uh, good start as well from Turbo. Look where he is. Yeah, I just caught him uh, on camera. He's up. Uh, what is it like eleven spots from where he started already? Oh, there's a little bit of a bump between the Volvo and the BMW of Steve Bolger, and Bolger's gone wide off the side of the circuit and whereabouts is he he's stopped no he's coming back on and he's dropping well down the order mm, caught that in the back of the shot as i was looking at maddie schwass and hans brunswick involved in a bit of a battle and the Vol volvo of oh, that luke joiner make trying to look at uh no that's not luke joiner that's uh matt schwass matt schwass yes oh the lick of flame out of the volvos Normally, oh. that's not a good thing. <laughs> yeah, Swedish engineering. She'll be right. It's just the sauna. Okay, okay, so a few of the people who have had big losses from the start of the race. Steve Bolger, definitely one of them. Uh, Rody's just cut the chicane at the back half of the circuit. Uh, Lime, sorry, not Lime, Mitch. Crackers also lost out quite a bit. Uh, Lime Mitch and Will Devonish is, set, uh, is down in 16th. So Lime Mitch has set the fastest lap of the race in second position at the minute. And he's arrowing himself onto the rear of Scott Nolan's HSV. Uh, they've gapped Damien Rasmussen and uh, Cam Rutledge quite a fair bit, actually, uh, to start that next group. And Brendan Hobson already onto the tail of that group, back up to sixth place. Now, they've left uh, Brendan Ross in a bit of no man's land. And then it's this battle group for eighth with Luke Joyner, Han, uh, Hans Brunswick, Wayne Wazza Spencer, uh, Matt Swass and Termo, uh, that is the next major group on track. As we've just seen, uh, who was that? Uh, Wazza make the move for ninth place now on Hans Brunswick. But gets a lot of curb on the start of the final chicane. He's gonna be pretty hard pressed to maintain it. I don't know he's held it through the final corner. Now it's all about getting a good drive because we know this lot front straight away is a drag strip. Both literally and figuratively, figuratively for these cars. This looks like he's closing a little bit on Luke Joyner, but he's going to have a little bit of a peek, and he's gone right to the inside of the track. But he's going to have to be last of the late breakers here. He's going to get it. He's going to skip it down the inside. He's going to get it oh, done. Wow. Well done, Walter. <laughs> Great late breaking move. Um, just I think live race has actually crashed on me, so I have no live additional live timing, which is a shame. Um, we've actually lost uh, Cam Rutledge from that front group. I think he went a bit deep at turn one and allowed both Ozrob and Brendan Ho Rob Hobson to pass by. But now look at the front. The uh, gap between Scott Nolan and Lime Mitch is now less than half a second. It's almost, uh, almost touching distance for those two, but it looks like Nolan's a little better out of that final corner than the skyline, and he's able to pull away down the straight. And... Nolan sets the fastest lap, but it's immediately eclipsed by Lime Mitch as they go across the line. So these two are the class of the field currently, and they're stretching their lead over the remainder as we come into lap five. Oh, we've completed lap five of this 50-minute race. Time flies. So we're going to be looking at about 50 laps tonight. Yeah, very close to, I think. Mm. Um, we'll we, might even see, we might even see a lapping of the field as well, because it's only yes. a, a minute-long lap. So... Oh, there's a bust up in the uh, first corner, and it looks like Termo. Termo and Scott Morrill have gotten into each other, and that's uh, closed everyone up. Okay, just going to bring that up up on replay, so... Walshy! Okay. Thanks, Brock. Thanks, Brock. <laughs> okay, we'll go back to see what the heck that was about. Um, Scotty Morrill just coming into turn one. He's all on his own. How's Scotty Morrill been involved in the... Ah, oh, okay. Ahead of him, the he just had nowhere to go. Oh, and then I saw, if you just look a few cars up, you can see what uh, Harvey was uh, getting angry about. Him and his teammate tried to go into the uh, the flip-flop, mm. the fastest chicane. Oh, there's a car sideways in the main straight, and it's Cam Rutledge. It's Cam Rutledge, uh, down 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th place. He's plummeting down the order. He He's just got onto the grass coming out of the final corner and was stranded on the main straight. He's dropped down to 18th position now. Okay, bring oh, that up no, on replay now. Mess. 
Okay, that, so he's got the Merc right behind him of Brendan Ross. He, oh, he's just got a... Oh, he's done it himself. Got onto the grass on the exit of the final corner and has spun his way to the infield. And he stopped running right in the middle of the... Oh, those Volvos! Nearly cleaned him up as well. Great evasive manoeuvre. So I'm going to bring us back to the action at the front because Lime Mitch and Scott Nolan are side by side heading through the slower chicane, heading onto the back straight now. Uh, sorry, not the back straight, uh, heading onto the main straight. They were very, very close uh, in the last section of the race and Lime Mitch is hunting here. He's absolutely got Nolan's measure. Even if the gap has stretched out a little bit, it's certainly looking like Nolan has to do a bit more defensive driving uh, than he is uh, trying to get away. Uh, Ozrob set the fastest lap of the race, a 1 minute 0 0.2. Uh, so really that time's coming down. We've got uh, three wide down the main straight at the moment between John McDonald, Scott Murrell, and I think that was uh, Cracker, yep. who's on the recovery drive. It's going to go four wide as they wrap up. I think that's uh, Will Devonish who's uh, in that battle as well. They resolved, or they nearly resolved all that. Cracker ran a bit wide and the Will Devonish Mercedes is going to get the move back, so that's put Devonish back into 10th. Cracker in 11th. Marilyn and McDonald. Oh, Mc <laughs> Marilyn on two wheels for the first part of the chicane. Oh, this is cracking stuff. This is brilliant. I'm absolutely loving this. Okay, now back to the front. This battle again between Lion Mitch and Scott Nolan. Mitch is much, 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 much closer this time around. So he's definitely in the wheel tracks of the HSV as they come down the main straight. Uh, a one minute flat point seven versus a one minute flat point nine. Here we go. Uh, between two of them. And then here we go. Lime Mitch to the inside thinks better of it as Nolan angles the car to the apex. But don't be surprised if Mitch is able to get that skyline around the HSV in pretty quick fashion. We'll keep eyes on this battle for this lap to see how the battle progresses over the course of the 2.8 kilometers. Uh, looks like Lime Mitch is definitely not getting the drive out of these chicanes. So the skyline looks uh, much more comfortable going into the corners mm. than the uh, than the HSV does. Coming through the second part of the uh, slow chicane now under the bridge, under the Ooh, MHR right. team. Sorry? Had a shocking lap uh, yeah. in comparison. Yeah, he's way back this time around and looks like Grassmussen's closing up on them as well funny that right uh yeah. if you, as soon as you put him on camera it all falls apart for him yep that's how it works oh rob's got a bit of a lonely race at the moment he's what three three seconds ahead of him three seconds behind him it kind of is like that once you get mm. at, out the front uh when you're kind of stuck in the mid pack you can get stuck in the mid pack but it looks like a lot of the mid packs actually sorted itself out the closest battle on track at the moment is 14th and 15th between kerosene and john mcdonald it's kerosene uh, just vaporized on my screen for a moment and came back, yeah. Um, they're probably the closest two on track. And then Cracker, uh, sorry, Cam Rutledge trying to find his way back through the field. Um, yeah, that, that back half of the field is very well congested as opposed to the front half, which is a little more open at the minute. Well, with 10 minutes gone in the race just now, we're going to start seeing pit stops. I imagine cars will be doing two stops this race. Well, the thing is, the, the, the tanks hold something like 120 litres. So... If you wanted to, you could very much run the whole race, I think, on a tank of fuel. Uh, it would be a lot of fuel, uh, but you could ooh, do it. As we said, the, a H H oh, the HP! Jack Harris John McDonald just had a massive two-wheel moment. Cost himself... He managed to hold it. He managed to hold it, but it's cost himself a couple of, pla a couple of places in, in that. And Brian Walsh has nearly gotten to the side of him as well. What on earth happened there? So he's come through the fast chicane right behind Adam Kerrison. And the gone to make the move down the inside. Just way too much curb. And how he didn't roll that, I do not know. Speaking of how he didn't roll that, Wayne was a Spencer. Almost did exactly the same thing through the Alpil chicane as well. Uh, was in a battle with Hans Brunswick for sixth place and just collected the tyre barrier and pitched himself up. Very lucky not to roll the car there. Because, of course, that um, those tyre barriers at turn one at the first UK, oh, you know, they're very, yeah. very much, very deadly. Um, so while we've got a moment, do we maybe want to take an onboard lap in these one of these cars to see how they look and feel and sound? Absolutely. If I can get a decent onboard camera, we will. Which I'm struggling with to do. There we go. Oh, it's Rob just coming through turn one now. As Cracker's the fastest lap of the race, so... 
we're climbing up here through this section of the S's and over the hill here in Osrod's Nissan skyline through this fast chicane here. Um, you can take a lot more curve on the first part of the chicane compared to the second part of the chicane uh, to worry about track cuts. Then braking just where the track gets dark for this slower section of corners. Very nice on the curbs there from Osrob as he just tracks Brendan Hobson running a little wide on the exit, picking up a little bit of dust. You see a big snap from Hobson just ahead. Oh, uh, that's Rasmussen, sorry. And Osrob has a nice, much nicer run. But as we come down this long, long main straight, HSVs just have a little more low end torque low-end acceleration that brings them up to speed a little quicker as we dive onto the brakes, the big drum brakes for the first corner. And that is 50 seconds, oh sorry, a minute a lap around Quarter Park. That's what it looks like. And if, as we look just a bit further uh, uh, front, it looks like Lime Mitch is in the lead. He has, we've missed that. Let's see if we go back in replay. So it looks like, yep, going into turn one. Uh, looks like he's just closed right up and pulled out of the slipstream. He's got the move done before the corner. Well done. Well, not, not quite, not quite. But yeah. I, uh, I think as well, just mm -hmm. sorry to jump over the top of you, uh, Kiwi, as I'm looking at Lime Mitch, just in the front of shot, you can see lap traffic already only 14 minutes into this race. Yes, that would be uh, the turbo engineering car of Glenn Wiles, the first car to go a lap down. Oh, soon. If, if yeah, soon. Not quite. Not, <laughs> not quite yet. Not quite yet. Soon. If uh, current trends show there's a sentence there well done kiwi i'm so proud of you so it looks like uh was is involved with a bit of battle with cracker should we go back there and check that out sure. oh miles goes around in front of the leaders classic miles okay now let's okay he's he's reversed it away good choice good choice glenn mm -hmm. good choice i'm proud of you so yeah this battle between devonish cracker and wayne was a spencer for eighth ninth and tenth place is going to get a bit spicy we have a yellow flag through the fast through the tire bundles at the chicane there's always been miles sitting there waiting patiently so they're sort of in a holding pattern here just pushing as hard as they can no one's really gaining or losing out of these three at the moment well i say that and crack is just sent it flying off it drifted quite wide there and almost came on and uh collected Wayne Spencer as he returned back to the track. Very lucky that he didn't get uh, get tagged on that one there, but he's uh, looking very vulnerable now to Brendan Ross, who's just behind him as they go down the main straight. Uh, that... Maybe he's been able to gain just a little bit. Yes, that Escort has a, as well pretty nice low-end acceleration. He's able to just skip away from the Mercedes behind him. Yep, I think I just gave him the ultimate commentator's per curse, sorry, and that's the Sierra, Cosy. Not the Escort. Oh, actually, something else we've missed is Osrob making the move on Rasmussen for third place. And that was a move into turn one as well. Uh, yep. Lined him up very nicely in the braking zone. And Rasmussen just outbraked himself a little bit and allowed the Nissan through. Yeah, that was... I mean, I don't think the uh, Rasmussen machine made it too difficult for him either. But yeah, in, in a race of this length, you know, it, it doesn't matter where you are 34 minutes away from the finish four minutes from the finish is a different story oh scott murrell has just had a moment coming through the slow section of track what's happened here oh he's got oh no he's hit one of the invisible tire barriers he got a wheel on the grass as, as he was braking on the outside and it speared him towards the inside and he's collected one of the invisible tire bundles uh that exist on this configuration of the circuit okay and it threw the car into the air oh that's yeah, that's owie. <laughs> I've got nothing, nothing else to say about that, but damn. Uh, um, the leaders, leaders are coming up to some lap traffic now. They've got, I think that's uh, McLean on mm -hmm. in the Caltex HSV. And it's actually held up line Mitch. So Scott Nolan was looking for a way past there, but didn't quite get his nose in. And now he's had to settle back into the slipstream. Very good job by McLean to sort of just step out of the way and allow the rest of the field to go past there. Scotty Nolan will be wishing that he could have made a better job of that lap traffic, uh, use him as a bit of a pick, because he was right on, on Lime Mitch's bumper. Couldn't make the mm. most of it that time around. That's a very endurance racing move, but it is a very legitimate move for this sort of racing. Um, 
we do have a few endurance racing specialists in this uh, race at the minute. Yeah. Uh, I mean, last night we had Steve Bolger take home the in, uh, GT3 Worlds Challenge uh, series. So congratulations to to the Bulge. Mm -hmm. um, as Scott Morrill comes into the pits to make a pit stop, which would unsurprisingly probably be for damage. Yep. He would not be a happy chappy. That's for sure. We know we know what he's like. <laughs> as as the leaders are now nose to tail again coming through endurance chat bend onto the final out of the front straightaway and Scotty Nolan really doesn't have the drive of the car ahead of him yeah it's weird because the previous laps uh, when Lime Mitch was uh, was behind it looked the same it looked like the the Skyline didn't have the drive but it looks much more now that the HSV is struggling over the corner I wonder if it's a, a thing having that car in your eye line as you're picking up the throttle makes it a little more difficult to to find your your throttle point and f really feel it out hmm. as they're coming up on manuel centino now to drop him a lap down and I, I love this sierra i really do oh we've got a few more pit stoppers uh mm -hmm. steve bolger looks like in the gravel rash racing bmw we might actually see a pit stop uh yeah in this race uh because I'm trying to do some quick maths here. It's about three liters a lap. So if you're running 120 liters in the tank, 40 laps. What's that work out to? 40 laps, roughly. Oh, well done. I'm very proud of you, Kiwi. That was some quick maths. Quick maths. And that, that, that did the absolute maximum you could probably do. So yeah, one stop. Now your window's open as we see the Gravel Rash racing machine in the pit lane. And going into the pits here, you are going to drop a lap. So you've got to be careful. Yeah, it is that tight. Uh, hmm. So. Uh, for those who have pitted, you hope you don't get a safety car at this point in time, because that would really uh, ruin your day mm. just a little bit. Uh, I've gone down to 7th place here. Matty Swass is just ahead of Will Devonish for 7th place. Devo, after that, after his shenanigans at the start, will be looking to get back up there. Um, and, ooh, he's actually very close up on the, uh, on the Volvo, Volvo coming through turn 1. That Volvo, yeah. <laughs> sorry, I was about to say that Volvo looks like a uh, a golden gay time box. That's probably the inspiration behind it. <laughs> now, beautiful. If, if the Mercedes can get a decent run through the flip flop, he's going to have a look down the inside into the slower section of the corners, and he's going to get it done nice and easy. I don't think the um, Maddie Schwartz made it too. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Chris coming in from nowhere. Driving on the scene with a full head of steam. Yeah, I don't think Schwartz made it too difficult. Uh, these guys are. Um, not uh, teammates in GT3. They run the same car in the GT3 World Challenge, uh, Devonish and Matt Swass. Um, but yeah, Swass didn't really make it all that difficult for the Mercedes to find its way through. Uh, Lime Mitch out of front has put up a bit of a gap as they're coming up on Ben Wiles now. Um, Ooh, flash the headlights. Miles, the lights Miles is um, coming through. Look out. Tell you what, if, he, if Lime Mitch can get this done and if Ben Wiles holds up Scotty Nolan behind him oh, he hasn't done that so that's fine and that's going to put him oh, yeah, I think we saw Miles going to the pits yes we did oh who was that on the inside that just hit the wall I'm not sure I didn't catch that Scotty G oh okay yeah. the, the last of the Synergy Sim Racing machines as we've got I think that was Hobson mm -hmm. in the pits yes it was Hobson yep. and Rasmussen in the pits Hobson not the first car to pit. What is this? Yeah, this is weird. And Synergy Sim Racing with actual competition? This is this isn't TCAC. What is this series? Hey, if it's like this for the whole team rounds, I'm not complaining. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, so it, so we'll keep an eye out on where Hobson comes out because that's going to be pretty crucial to how this race folds out. As we see, uh, McLean getting two wheels on the gravel on the exit and entry into one. But holds that nicely. That gravel, if you hit that gravel at all, your car's going to go around if you're not careful. Yeah, I... Whoa! Uh, sorry just, sorry to interrupt you there. McLean's just launched off the tire barrier, got on two wheels, gone to the inside of the track. Oh, and he's stuck. I had this happen to me in practice as well. His rear tire's actually stuck in the surface of the track. So he's in a, a bit of a bad position here. I think he might, he might just have to give it away. So I don't think you can get out of that. I'm just making sure oh, if everyone's checking up to avoid the laggy car. Yeah, he's. Um, I think he's just stuck. I think he, he's just stuck. And we've got a 
Is we got a safety car for it? No, it's just a yellow flag there. Just a yellow flag still at this stage. I think he's just stuck. I think that's. I think that's. That's it. I think so. Oh, yeah, his car's lagging all over the place. He's gonna. Unfortunately, we saw this happen. This can happen in anything where games can glitch out. Unfortunately, looks like it's going out. McLean tonight. Um. So just an update on where Rasmussen and. Uh, uh, Brenton Hobson have come out. They've come out in 14th and 15th place. It's got a Nolan's um, in. Yep. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so they were just ahead of um, John McDonald and behind Brian Walsh. Um, so that's actually pretty decent for them. Good job. Yeah, so keep an eye on. We'll go down to where is he at the moment? Brendan Hobson in 14th place, just coming through turn one. So interestingly, they haven't gone a lap down because why Mitch is just going through turn one now and there's still that yellow flag for um mclean's car that's still stuck there okay so we're just going to keep an eye on hobson coming through to the slower section now it's going to be relatively tight i think it's good. i think hobson's had a good outlap and he definitely hasn't held his teammate up behind him and scott nolan's on the move though so he's okay. winding up to 100 k's per hour it should comfortably come out ahead because, yeah, and it's the full length of the main straight almost because he did have that gap over the, his teammates prior to the pit stops. So that's going to put him, was that, 10th place? Yep. So now it's uh, Lime Mitch who's coming across the line. I can't imagine too much longer before Lime Mitch pits. Um, Nathan Higgins in the chat saying, yeah, that happened in TSAC race in Adelaide. Basically. For McLean, yeah. So once you get stuck, there's really not nothing you yeah. can do. And I think oh, actually... and Rody, I was just watching the uh, line Mitch and Rody got a little all up out of the first corner and uh, spun itself to the inside. So, well done, Rody. Yep. Uh, line Mitch has just made his way through some more lap traffic. That was big dog he just got around. So that's down to, what's that? Uh, 21st, I think he's lapped up to now. That's 17th. He's really working his way through the field at the moment. Mm. Uh, Lime Mitch, is he going to come in this lap? No, he's not. I uh, think uh, well, you, you can, because you what? We said a full tank would get you 40 laps, right? And we're expecting about a 50 lap race. Mm. So it, it, I guess it's a matter of where you want to split it up. And if you have more fuel, you have a bit more flexibility in that. That's as, true. And he's probably playing the safety car game. If a safety car comes out now, dive in. And, yeah. And make sure you're cover, covering that off. That has put... Uh, Ozrob, he's just come to the pits now in the second. Hans Brunswick's in third. He's going to take second place from Ozrob on the si on pit cycle. And Devinish is going to be up into third place. He hasn't stopped yet, has he? Uh, I don't think so, no. 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 But he'll be... Oh, no! He's just... Just as I put him on camera, he's locked up and gone sideways into turn one, nearly taking out Hans Brunswick as well in the process. Very lucky. <laughs> yeah. Uh, meanwhile, looks like everyone else has sort of separated themselves out. Ooh. Oh, that's, that, I thought that was passing pit, but that's just roadie. That's fine. Um, I've just got my camera parked up at turn one, just kind of having a look at the field go through. Uh, I think it's Osrob is just tagged on behind Rody uh, at the moment. Uh, he has pit. He's actually come out ahead of two of the three Synergy Sim Racing cars, so he's slotted in just behind Scott Nolan and Cam Rutledge. Has Cam Rutledge taken his pit stop? Because if he has, he's vaulted himself up the order. We'll keep an eye on him there, but yeah, that's a decent recovery drive from Cammy. He can't have pit, surely. Hmm, I, that's what I'm thinking as well. Hmm. Oh, no, he's pitting now. There you go, that answers that question. Well, there you go, that's the uh, <laughs> problem solved. Yeah. So we are just past half race distance at the moment, so uh, everyone is... Uh, yeah, Devinish is in as well. Yep. So this is very much the even tyre strategy coming into play. It's even like tyre, a... I think it's more even fuel. So I don't think... It, yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens. We might ask some people how they dealt with the tyres after the race. Yep. So it looks like the top three are yet to pit, being Hans Brunswick, Matty Schwoss, and Brendan Ross. Lion Mitch, currently in fourth place, will be the effective leader once all that clears out. Scotty, uh, so we've missed, we've missed, I think we've missed Lion Mitch pit there. 
Yeah, I think he's just come in. Oh, as someone spears off at turn one, that looked like one of the MHRT cars that might have been uh, either Glenn Miles or, uh, no, sorry, not Glenn Miles, Brian Walsh or Brock Harvey. So if you have these three out in front now, you just keep going until you can't go no more. Yeah, right? I agree. Yeah. Uh, just try and elongate that first stint as long as you possibly can mm. as Hans comes through the first corner. Um, and then, uh, yeah, hope that it comes back to you later on in the race. Yep. Ooh, has he got a yellow flag? No, that's okay. I'm again. I'm just keeping my camera parked yep. at turn one. I'll, I'll do that. When, I'll do that when everyone cleanses. For the, for and it actually, yep. looks like was that Lime Mitch? Ah, oh, that was uh, passing the other synergy in racing car of Scotty G. So he's got a, a few seconds over Scott Nolan mm -hmm. for what is, would be the effective lead of the race. He's actually not too far behind Brennan Ross, um, who I don't think has taken a pit stop yet. And it's the two um, Ikuri Bun Brunswick Volvos that currently lead the way. The, the uh, colourful Golden Gay Time machines. Golden, the Golden Gay Time cars. Yes. I think Medish Ross has just come into the pits now. Yes, yes indeed. So that leaves Hans and uh, Brennan Ross as the last two of that leading group to pit. Yep, which had happened not too much. Oh, sorry, I just tasted a bit of pesto I had for, for dinner. Um, <laughs> everyone, needed, everyone needed to know that. Did they, though? No. Been a good drive from Hans, I've got to say. Kept it clean. Oh, don't give him a big head. Oh, I know, you got to contact with him. <laughs> it's fine. I have to, because if you do it, I have to deal with it. And I don't want to deal with it. Exactly. That's why I'm doing it. Um, coming up a big dog to, to put a lap on the big dog gets it done so yeah Hans will just keep motoring until he can't motor no more no doubt uh, yep. Ian McLean has pulled out of the race as you could imagine after that as well so the battle between Lime Mitch and Scotty Nolan two and a half seconds between the two currently <sighs> Scotty Nolan's got a fair work a fair bit of work to do to catch back up we've seen it we've seen it for the latter half of the race Lime Mitch has just been so good and Scotty Nolan's only make a few minor mistakes as we just saw out of the last corner there he's got a bit too early on the gas yeah but it will only take one moment of traffic or one mistake at turn one for that gap to entirely disappear so uh Lomich needs definitely needs to keep his wits about him uh in that skyline just to make sure that he's staying concentrated because we are only just past half distance so we're mm. 20 minutes to go in this 15 minute race so there's still quite a ways to go we could see some mental fatigue um uh issues some mental mistakes come on later in the race that might change the shape of the race in saying that though Lime Mitch has done very very well in the recent rounds of the uh, GT3 series which has been mm. more endurance based so he could be on for for a good result here yeah you'd hope so if he's leading the race at this point so we're just going to park up on turn one so Hans Brunswick's just gone past my camera now uh, he's just about to so that's that's the second uh, Brunswick car oh, yeah. so there's Hans Hang on, I'm cycling through all the cameras now because I pushed the wrong button. Well done. I know. We'll do that. We'll do it next lap. <laughs> Directing. So yeah, Hans, 17 seconds ahead. We've seen about 45 second pit stop time. So that should put him around the 10. Yeah, just on the edge of the 10 around Brock Harvey uh, and Adam Kerrison, both of which who are yet to pit. So mm -hmm. he might... Uh, just maybe have Damien Rasmussen in his sights towards the end of the race. Yep. I've, only, I've just noticed a sponsor on the back of Hans's car. What's that one? Is that KFC? No. No? Now, I want to have a look at the game because I'm not sure whether it says only fans or only hands. <laughs> it says only hands. That's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Okay. This time around, we're going to do the whole Parker camera. Oh, should, oh Brendan Ross drive through penalty. Speeding a pit lane or took track cut, you reckon? That would be a track cut penalty, I think. He's not been through the pits recently uh, enough for that to be a, a pit lane infringement, I don't think. Okay. I'm just trying to find him and just have a quick look. So I'm just packed up at turn one. Uh, Lime Mitch, the lead, second place on the road, has just come through. And there's Scotty Nolan in third. Fair way back to Osrob in fourth. He's got a couple of lap cars between him and Scotty Nolan. There goes Osrob. Brendan Hobson and... Damien Rasmussen just behind him. Then we have a bit more of a gap 
down to Will Devonish, who's in seventh place. There's Brendan Rush, serving his drive through penalty. There's Rody, a couple of laps down in the pen right machine. There's Will Devonish and Brock Harvey right on his tail. And there's Cracker coming through in ninth place. And then we're a few seconds back to Matty Cecil. And, oh, let's just check with that battle because Matty Swass has made the move for 10th place. Great move down Mate. the inside of the Norton Hornet. Well done, well done, uh, Matt Cecil. Uh, sorry, Matt Swass. Uh, yeah. We also saw Scott Murrell go through that. And then the next car on the list is Cam Rutledge, who has then taken a pit stop. Yep, and then there's a gaggle behind him. Oh, and there's Mitch again. Uh, so Cracker just went a little wide through the first corner, allowed Steve Bulger to come through on the inside. Uh, mm -hmm. And then the next two cars behind that pair is Glenn Miles and I think Brian Walsh, engaged in one of their epic duels. Excellent. Uh, and I'm going back up to Hans, who's 17 seconds up the road, going around one more time with 17 minutes to go. He'll be leaving it to the last possible minute, as we know. Lime Mitch is really pushing. He's flashing his yeah, light. He's got oh, there goes Glenn yeah. Miles. Made that easy for him. He's got a fair bit of traffic ahead of him as well, mm. so it was uh, Glenn Miles there. And then he's got Brian Walsh, and then that battle between Cracker and Steve Bulger. Uh, Steve Bulger, was it? Or was that Scott Murrell? I think it was Steve Bulger. Yep. It uh, was, in fact, Steve Bulger. I was right. So that's that's his next battle that he's approaching. Um, he's actually been progressing through the field quite uh, competently. There's not really been too much of an issue for him. That gap between himself and... Uh, Hans has actually come down just a little bit. It's about 17 and a half seconds now, as opposed to 18 or 19 seconds or a few laps ago, as Scott Nolan, just in the background of my shot, uh, gets a big tank slapper through the first corner. Oh, speaking of tank slappers through the first corner, I think we've just had Brendan Hobson have a spin at Ooh. turn one. I'll get to that. Yes, he has gone off. He's on the inside of the track. What has he done there? As we saw Termo get a drive through penalty as well. He's missed his braking marker and mm. gone straight into the back of Ozrob. Hobbo with the, Hobbo with the really uncharacteristic era. Wow. Oh, that's these cars are hard to drive, we know that. That's just mm. Ozrob was able to hold that, thankfully, but geez. Yeah, very lucky for Ozrob in the Nissan there. So that's actually dropped. Hobbo uh, a bit closer to his teammate, uh, Damien Rasmussen. So they're the two Synergy Sim racing cars just coming through the final corner right now. As we're just looking at uh, Hans just making his way through, that was Scotty Murrell. Uh, so that's now uh, the top 10 on the lead lap, but Hans still to make his pit stop. And that'll, that'll uh, open up a few people as well. So Cam mm. Rutledge, who's currently in... 11th place we see scotty g get a penalty for a track cut violation as well i would expect pretty easy to do through that far chicane uh just taking a bit too much on the second half and running all four wheels over that curb yep now we're just seeing uh, scotty nolan in third place he's still within that two second window he hasn't lost as much time as i thought he might have done as we see line hey. match there closing up on uh cam rutledge, cam rutledge. yep so Cam's done well there to get out of the way, and that will allow Lime Mitch, hopefully, uh, at the tail end of the straight, just to breeze past. As Glenn Miles gets a drive-through penalty, that will also probably be for track limits abuse. Really, uh, longer race uh, makes it a bit difficult. Whoa, uh, Lime Mitch has just run wide through turn one. Sorry to cut through there. He's drifted that. Nice. Nicely done. He's uh, cost himself four tenths of a second to Scotty Nolan now. So just starting to maybe get a little bit of that mental fatigue you talked about earlier? Maybe. There is 15 minutes left, so it's it's not all over and done with just yet, as we see Scotty G get another penalty. Um, we might see a bit more track cut penalties uh, as we get closer to the end of the race. People may, may be using a bit too much as we approach the final 15 minutes. Yep. I'm going back to uh, Brock Harvey. He looks like he's in eighth place at the moment. Th just three tenths ahead of the somewhat out of control cracker that we've seen he's gonna somewhat out of control <laughs> yeah but they're going to go to a real ding dong battle uh, brock went to the outside of the track out of the over the hill uh cracker followed them as they went down the hill B bit of very hard racing between these two tell you what brock was a lot later on brakes and cracker was into the slower section as well 
Maybe Brock's got those brakes really hooked up. There's a yellow flag in that final sector. I'm not sure why that oh, was. That's on. actually been cleared now. Yep. And we're seeing someone just got a bit of tail happy onto the front straight. So we'll stick with this. We'll stick with this for a little bit. We'll see what Cracker can do. Because Cracker's got a very good run. He's going to get the move done along the front straight, is he? Yes, he has. Wow. Smashed it. I'm not sure if that was Brock being polite because he did flash his lights. Brock just loves flashing his lights. He loves flashing everything. Yeah, he's got a bit of a exhibition. Okay, Scotty G is just taking the Mickey now. <laughs> not near the record yet. I think the record is. Uh, I mentioned it last week. It was twelve uh, for either Brian Walsh or Glenn Miles at Abu Dhabi. Yeah, I think it's twelve. Uh, is the is the record of penalties that has been witnessed in an AMS Oz race? Yep. They're not quite there yet. Uh, um. Just so Lion Mitch has gotten through the battle of Cracker and sorry not Cracker Camera Ridge and Scott uh, Steve Bolger mm -hmm. I can't recognise all these cars yet um, and so he's managed to get uh, through them and away uh, so now Scott Nolan's uh, job will be to get through the pair of them as well um, but that's actually opened up the gap between uh, Lion Mitch and Scott Nolan uh, a bit more uh, it's now over two and a half seconds and we'll probably stretch out to over three as Scott Nolan gets a little held up in the slow section by the Seton Peter Jackson uh, Sierra of Cam Rutledge. Mm -hmm. With 11 minutes to go, Hans is really pushing this. He's got, what, another 10 laps to fit? He's going to need... He's going to need to pit within the next three laps, I think. Yeah. Yeah. If, if our sums are correct. Yeah, which... I mean, it is late at night. They could be wrong, but... Yeah. He can't be out too much longer, and that will obviously cleanse the field. But what it has done is it's actually uh, meant that he's gained a little bit more on the guys that he would be racing against. So mm -hmm. we were talking about him... Uh, he's in now. Oh, there we go. Um, so he'll have a much shorter field that he'll need to do. So he might actually lose maybe 40 seconds in the pits as opposed to 45 or 48 yeah. that we were seeing a bit earlier on so, we'll so we could see him actually drop in ahead or around about where damien rasmussen is yeah we'll keep an eye on that as we see line match come across out of the final corner now to take the on-road lead and there he goes now three three seconds ahead of scotty nolan almost four seconds ahead so the gap between... I told you that gap was going to explode. Mm -hmm. um, the gap between uh, Rasmussen and Hans to the second sector mark was 40 seconds, 40.6 seconds. So wow. we'll see. I've got eyes on Rasmussen uh, coming down. He's actually had a bit of a moment coming through the final corner. He has. This is going to make it very tight. Hans is, I think, on the move. No, he's not on the move yet. There he is. There he goes. He's on the move and now. He's gonna be able to get up to speed beyond and Rasmussen's just going to sneak past now can Hans hold out Will Devonish into the first corner he goes to the inside line Devonish is going to have to swoop all the way around the outside he's coming in with a great head of steam and swoops and gets the move made I feel like Hans may have done the polite thing there which is to be fair enough the right thing to do when you come out of the pits but still he's made, gained five positions from where he started so that's been a great play by Hans a sensible play, a nice, yeah. st diff a different strategic play yeah. um, from Hans. He, he, yeah, passed a lot of people in the pit lane, which yeah. is the way that you can do it in a longer race. Absolutely. Um, what that has, well, so just looking through the field now, there's not much on track battling at this stage with nine and a half minutes to go. Uh, where do you think the battle is going to come down? Um, I think if Hans uh, is on the money. This group for uh, fifth, sixth, and seventh, uh, so Rasmussen, uh, Devenush, and Hans might start to compress a little bit. Because we've got, what, we've got nine minutes left and a minute a lap. We're going to get at least another nine laps in, I think, mm -hmm. plus, plus one. So it'll be, it'll be tight um, to see how they all go. But yeah, everyone's all a bit scrambled. This longer race has allowed everyone to sort of sit in their own little box for a little while. We just see? And in fact, I think the closest battle is those three cars, 5th, uh, 6th, and 7th. Okay. Um, yeah. Will, will um, Devonish with the yellow Australian flag on his roof, isn't that, isn't that like not frowned upon? Isn't it like really frowned upon? Oh, Brock Harvey's got a drive-through oh, penalty. Brock Harvey. 
Brock, what have you done? See, my, my livery for Will is just completely bone white, so I don't think it's actually worked for me. Brock, did you cut the track? Which is a bit of a shame. Um, but yeah, the the black with the, the, the Vegemite car, uh, that's yeah. what we're going to call it now. Okay. Let's see. Oh, oh, good run from Ozrob as well to bring it up to currently sit in third place. These cars are not easy to drive. I feel like the skyline... I, what? Whoa. Uh, Damien Rasmussen's just had the rears locked up through the first corner and it's allowed Will Devonish to come through as they go through the uphill chicane. Devonish in the Ve the Vegemite car has gone through and taken uh, that uh, fifth place. Meanwhile, Rasmussen got on two wheels and is now vulnerable to Hans Brunswick behind him as well. So a shocking few corners for Rasmussen there. It's dropped him completely away from fifth place and it's going to maybe even drop him out of sixth as well as Hans in that... Uh, the the gay time uh, Volvo is looking pretty racy at the minute. So now he's going to have to defend into the final corner and a little smoother out that final corner, which is a much better than what we saw from him last lap around. Um, but yeah, completely uh, screwed the pooch on that one, uh, did Rasmussen. He did. Uh, seven minutes to go. That's, so that's pretty much going to give Devonish a great chance at a top five result, which we thought might have come towards the end but not this early on now Hans Hans will have the fresher tyres so can he make the most of them uh, that is if he changed tyres I'm not sure that he would have made the decision to change tyres I think he, I'm not sure I haven't looked through uh, done a full stint from one of these cars to see how the tyres go off um, but it could be that they've decided not to take tyres um, although if they do have fresh tyres this would be the time to use them as they start to break for the slower chicane. Flames shooting from the side of both the HSV and the Volvo uh, as they come through the slower sections, break that second sector marker and into the final corner. Three and a half tenths is the gap as we start lap 43 for this pair coming across the line now. With six minutes to go, Oh, Hans is actually closing quite significantly. That Volvo Brook has got a great slipstream. But it, it, it yeah. looks to the inside. He's going to he's going to send it. He's really sent it. He's going to hold hold it as well through turn one. It's going to give him the inside running for the fastest chicane. They're going to run too wide. You can't run too wide through here, and Hans. No, they are going to run too wide through here. And oh, David no, Rasmus has lost it. it. He's lost it. It was just too much. It was just too much to hold that inside line for the second corner. And he got up on two wheels over the curb. The car bounced and it spun him towards the inside. So now he could even be in uh, contention with Cracker for seventh place. He could even lose that as they come down into the slow section of the track. And yeah, Cracker's got the inside line. Breaks very early though and gives Rasmussen a bit of a free kick. No, they both go wide. They make a little bit of contact. Rasmussen writes himself earlier than Cracker does and they shoot out the other side. That was just a bit scrappy all around. Just a, just a lot. <laughs> just a lot. As we see Damien Rasmussen getting all crossed up on the exit of the final corner as well. Wow. The oh, come down quite a fair bit. Sorry, what were you about to say? Uh, I got excited about it. It was just a lap, lapping situation. It wasn't full position. Uh, well, speaking of full position, uh, uh, sorry, Cracker has made the move on Rasmussen into the first corner and gets the power down enough uh, on the exit. Is he going to be able to prevent the crisscross? Yes, he is. So he has now taken seventh place from Damien Rasmussen. Moshi with a penalty there, tr cutting the track. Um, so I'm just going to bring us back up to the front. That gap at the front has stabilized and come down a little bit. It's dropped down to maybe one and a half to two seconds between Lime Mitch and mm. Scott Nolan. Four and uh, a half to go. We'll see what can happen here. But yeah, that has significantly decreased. I'm not sure there's enough time left, but definitely keep an eye on it. Well, it will only take one mistake from Lime Mitch, as I mentioned earlier, to, to bring... Oh no, Cam Rutledge with a penalty. Oh no. What's yeah. happened to Cam? He's gone off at the second chicane, I think. Taking too much curb. Yeah, gone too wide, taking all the curb, and that's given him a penalty. Uh, that's a shame. Shame for Cam, who started, remember, at the head of the field in the Sierra. Um, unfortunately, not able to convert that to a good result. That gap at the front is actually coming down quite a bit. It's lost another three, four tenths 
uh, to the second sector and we'll get them as they cross the line and it's another tent. So Lion Mitch is beginning to hurt here uh, through uh, the latter stage of the race. Is there enough time for Nolan to make a move for the lead of the race? We'll keep, have to keep an eye on that with three, three and a half minutes to go. So you're looking, what, four more laps at most? Uh, plus one, so maybe even five. So we could get to that 50 lap marker. Tell you what, Lime Mitch was really slow through the chica through the first chicane. Yeah, and he doesn't look nearly as comfortable as he did a few laps ago. I it wish I had live races so I could give you a list of what their previous lap times have been. Because that gap now is nose to tail coming through the slower section of the track. And they're coming up on Brock Harvey and Scotty Murrell, who's just had a drive through penalty. No, it's not Scotty Murrell, it's Brendan Ross. But they're coming up on Brock Harvey, who put him a lap down. Oh, the and actually, Rasmussen's had another spin in turn one. Okay. That's one that, this one's more significant as well. He's actually gone well off. Okay, well, while that's happening, Lion Mitch is diving to the inside to cover off the attacking Scotty Nolan, who's going to try to go around the outside of turn one. He's done it. Hold. He's he's overdone it, though. He's gone very wide on, on mid-corner. There's a car off to the Norton Hornet as well. So Scotty Nolan's got the move done, but Lion Mitch... Tries to think, stick back through the chicane, can't get it done, and there's a change for the lead. Scotty Nolan, now in front. Now, there is a car parked on the exit of Turn 1. I think that is Matt uh, Cecil in the Norton, uh, Norton Hornet. Uh, as we're watching the leaders try and progress through traffic, I think that is Brock Harvey. And Brendan Ross is right in front of the group of them. Woo, woo, That's woo. very, very tight. But there's, this battle is still nose to tail as they come into the final corner. I think... They've got a little bit more room ahead of them as well. So we'll get to see these two guys fight it out. Uh, you know, uh, fisticuffs, gloves off is the expression I was looking for. Um, for the next few laps, there's a great big gap ahead of them. So I won't have to worry about traffic, maybe even for the rest of the race. They fly down the drag strip into turn one. Lime Mitch looking for a late braking maneuver, perhaps not quite uh, slots in behind. And they go through to on lap 48. So we've got... 48 laps, uh, this is lap 48. We've got this one, at least another one, and potentially a plus one at the end of that as well. So we will hit 50 laps today here for the ATCC opener on AMS Oz. Do you know what, Scotty Nolan's pulled out a good seven tenths of a second already. Is that gonna be enough to turn it into a great seven tenths of a second, to potentially turn it into a race win? Well, for Scott oh, oh, if Lime Mitch keeps doing that, way too much curve on the inside, and he's got a two wheel moment. And that might be enough. That might be the elastic braking for Lion Mitch because that's now a second and a half gap. And you could could maybe hold on if you're a bit slower, if it's nose to tail. But as soon as it's that big of a gap, you kind of have to, you let it go. Lost the draft. And Termo gets the penalty. So uh, last lap around for Scott Nolan, a minute 0 0.3 and a minute 1.9 for Lion Mitch. Uh, so I think that's all she wrote between the pair of them. Yep, uh, looking at Damien Rasmus, who's had a scrappy couple of laps down in eighth place. Got Matty Schwoss right behind him now. That He'll be kicking himself. He was doing so well, and then just a couple of small mistakes cost him four or five spots. And yeah, we've said, we said that that's enough. That is enough for a... Or as... Is that Hans, who's almost had a moment in turn one? Yeah, so all he needs is a, a, a little mistake to... to completely have a race fall apart or a battle fall apart and yeah just those little things those little one percenters has been the difference between perhaps Damon Rasmussen and his sim racing teammates as time has expired so we'll come across the line now to start lap 50 and the final lap of the race Scotty Nolan been a good good very good run from him well done to him when he wins this if he wins this race got to get to the last lap plenty of course it hopefully shouldn't have too many issues. There isn't too many lapped cars ahead of him. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's been a very, very clean race from Nolan. He did exactly what he needed to do for the entire race. Uh, a great battle with Lime Mitch to start and another great battle with Lime Mitch to finish the race. Uh, yeah, it's been exactly what we expected from the Synergy Sim Racing group. Um, just a bit of a surprise to not see more of them up ahead of the field. They've got some actual real competition nowadays, yeah, which Thompson. is very exciting for future races. Brendan Hobson down in fourth place. Yeah, that's that's un unheard of. <laughs> um, and I think what's impressive as well about this race, we're going to have 26 cars finish it. Uh, 25. 25. We've lost Gotti G as well. Oh, yeah. 
So as we see, Sc Scott Nolan now coming across onto the front straight away. The Synergy Sim Racing, Holden, or oh, Scott, yeah, Holden, takes a win. Great work, Scott Nolan. Second place behind him, Lime Mitch. Flash those lights, son, you're well deserved. Third place. Steve Holger will come through next across the lane. The great gaggle of cars. And then third place will be uh, Ozrob, who's just coming across the line now. The second mm -hmm. of the Skylines. There's uh, Rody and then Brenton Hobson for fourth. Will Devonish in fifth place. And it will be Hans Brunswick, uh, who comes across the line in sixth. There he goes. Yep. Seventh place will be Cracker. He's just going to get around Cam Rutledge. Oh, there's a slow, there's a slow beamer. That's how they've avoided. But Cracker will come across the line in seventh place in the Calibre Sierra. Eighth place will be Matty Swass. Did that beamer run out of fuel potentially? And Matt Swass coming across the line in eighth place. Good result, first time out in these cars. Damien Rasmussen in ninth. And looks like the uh, Dale Smith flooring assistance is going to help. Steve Folgers also. These beamers have run out of fuel. Steve Folgers is also going really slow in tenth place at the moment. Oh, well, he's finished. He's crossed the line. Yes, he has. Okay. <laughs> as, as, we, as cars this, now do their thing of going sideways and upside down everywhere. The the shenanigans have started. As, um, where's that Beamer? Has that Beamer crossed the line? John McDonald? Yes, he has. How did he, how did he cross the line there? I am not sure. Okay, so he's had a little bit of help from, um, is that Scott, Scotty friends? Moore behind? Well, what a great race! That what a great fantastic. start to the, the ATCC Championship at Automobilista Australia, run by TCAC. Uh, in the end, it was very well done from Scott Nolan, continuing the Synergy Sim Racing dynasty that has formed in the uh, in the TCAC series. We'll just wait for them to all jump into the. Uh, the booth uh, and we have Scott Nolan Scott congratulations on taking the first round of the Automobilista Australia ATCC championship great race from the end how are the new cars yeah thanks guys um yeah look that was probably uh up there with one of my best drives on AMS on this platform um Mitch drove really well as uh as well and um credit to him and uh man it was a good battle it was a really good race i really enjoyed it plenty of traffic um but yeah i'll uh, i was pretty chuffed to come back from about six seconds down at the pit stops and uh get away with that one yeah you had a, a great battle with lime mitch to start the race and then another one to finish the race um is it uh is it a good feeling uh seeing these guys who have started in tcac start to really come to the fore and start challenging for race wins and challenging for battles as we said at the end of last season everyone's improved it's all about like consistency and um uh yeah mitch did a really good job with consistency there um it was you know i had to I had to pretty much uh, mute the chat and uh, get, you know, head down, bum up and try and uh, haul him back. And we really had a good battle there with the traffic. He would get the good end of it and then I would get the good end of it. And, you know, we, we had a sort of battle there of about three seconds. And then sort of the last 10 minutes, I slowly pegged him back enough to get in the draft. And that was a major thing about this track was that draft because uh, the Nissan, I think he was in, had, had a lot of, um, a lot of grunt. Uh, so it was really strong out of the final corner and uh, a lot of straight line speed that and the forward so um to get in his draft was the main goal and then once i was in there i was like all right i'm gonna have a red hot crack here and uh yeah it was a pretty pretty ballsy move but uh <laughs> got, got it done and no contact and yeah it was good yeah uh just a quick comment on these cars a 15 minute race around a bull ring like that that must take a fair bit out of you um yeah look the cars are like you know brock does a stellar job i was actually surprised i have told him i actually think they're probably a little bit too easy to drive Ooh. um i kind of think maybe the tire wear needs to be nerfed a bit like i don't know if you looked at the times but i was probably only three or four tenths off on the last few laps and i did manage my tires and that was part of the strategy of letting mitch go at the start was um i really didn't want to get into a battle and bring rob and the other guys behind um into it so i really wanted to be a two horse race i thought that was the best chance for for both of us to come away with a good result and um so i, I let him go and tried to stay in his draft and then thought i'd try and undercut him so he either was really line ball with fuel or um or he did a really good job in that stint where i pitted but um 
yeah, no, the cars are good. I just think, uh, yeah, I think they're probably a bit easy to drive. But, um, man, good fun. Better than those all-wheel drive things. <laughs> yeah, especially now that you're not getting weight every time you take a win. Yeah, look, uh, success, <laughs> Ballas. I don't actually know what the rule is. I know, like, I think there is some sort of rule. I can't remember. Or, or is it officially gone? I don't know. But, um, yeah, think, look, it was just... I think just... there isn't. I think okay, you get, great. You yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so, so, yeah, really good to start the championship off uh, with a with a positive as well. And uh, we did the same thing last season and uh, we got run down by uh, the big 88. So, um, yeah, look, uh, winning races is all you can do to cement that. So we've done that, and uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how the rest of it goes. Yeah, congratulations on taking the first race, Scott Nolan. Uh, Lime Mitch, second place tonight. Lime, great battle between yourself and Scott. You elected to stay out a bit longer in the pit cycle uh, than him. Just take us through the race from your perspective. Um, yeah, I just started to reel him in towards the start of the race, or at the start of the race. Um, I was struggling to actually stay in the draft because that holding so quick in a straight line, but I was monitoring, mon- monitoring the times as he pitted and I saw that they were slowly starting to gain. So I decided that it was it was time to pit. And then, yeah, the traffic was lifted the heart rate quite a bit sometimes. <laughs> but towards the end, I think he had the tyres on me. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's been really cool to, to watch you over the last few weeks um, in not only GT3, but in TCAC, uh, start to challenge for more podiums and for more race wins. Uh, do you feel that, uh, that you started to, to come to the fore now, or does it still uh, feel like a bit more of a challenge when you're racing up against these guys? I have noticed that I've started to get a lot better, finishing a lot higher, especially in GT3 and the supercars. Um, now it's coming across to... TCAC. So you feel do you feel like you've uh, arrived, perhaps? Do you feel like you might be in contention for a few more race wins? Uh, yeah, I hope so. This is probably the Nissan's weakest track, so we'll find. Uh, just quickly on these cars, how are you finding them? How what what are they like compared to the the older TCAC cars that we were just using? Uh, I prefer these a lot better. Probably. <laughs> Um, as Scott said, the tyre wear is probably a bit bit low, but, you know, we're only four tenths off, so... Awesome. Uh, congratulations on taking second place tonight, uh, Lone Mitch. Thank you. And third place this evening was Oz Rob. Uh, Rob, uh, up to third, starting from fifth place. You had a bit of a lonely race in the middle there. Yeah, just tell us about uh, about the race from your perspective. Uh, yeah, um, I don't know about lonely race, but I was um, at Hobbo, sort of uh, in and around and up my ass, <laughs> trying to push me all, trying to push me. Um, just these, I love these cars; these are awesome. Um, better than those buzz box things that we were racing before. So, not, <laughs> so nerf those things, Brock. No, no, not again. Um, yeah. Funnily, <laughs> enough, funnily enough, there is there is a livery coming if people want to know but well, i'm racing an orange skyline but funnily enough my very first car when i was 18 30 years ago uh was an orange that's in the skyline so it's almost back to my roots oh um, beautiful <laughs> had that for a track um, day around quarter park sorry did you take that for a track day around quarter park uh, oh i wish <laughs> <laughs> it was a 300 horsepower monster but still um uh yeah no i just knew these these uh, cars you just can't overdrive so i was just trying to break in the straight line trying to break a little bit earlier than normal to not spin the tires up um i thought hobo might catch me and get past me but and towards the end i was just about to run out of fuel so the last lap i had to really back off otherwise i was done and but uh yes yeah, so i was happy to get third in the end awesome uh Coming from the the all wheel drive cars to the big heavy uh, high powered rear wheel drive cars, how much of a change in driving style do you have to make in order to get the maximum out of these cars? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, you know, it's quite easy to over rotate these things, um, and with the tire, with the power and the tires. So yeah, you really just got to slow in, fast out mentality as much as you can and hit your hit your marks every every point. Um, because uh, yeah, if you too overdo it, it heats the tires and away you go. So, uh, but no, I really like these cars. Um, 
I'm glad there's no weight bet on this because <laughs> I, I feel like I'm the two Ronnies after first round. It's good night for me and good night for him and see you later after the weight penalty. So, um, so I'll be happy with no weight penalty. Awesome. Uh, so third place tonight, uh, we've got a 12 round series ahead. Is there any particular race that you're looking forward to uh, for, for yourself and for the Niston? Uh, oh, any round for me. Just they're all I'm, good. Any round I can beat Hobbo, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations no, on no. beating Hobbo tonight and congrat congratulations in third place. No worries. And Chris, I, I think everyone echoed the same statement there. They're loving driving these cars and they're loving the, the big, talky, uh, rear-wheel drive machines. Um, and when everyone's having that much fun, it produces great fun racing. And I think that's what we saw tonight. I think that's exactly right. And these things will be on track in a couple of weeks' time with our next round at Simmons Plains Raceway. God, these things around Simmons Plains are going to be so much fun as well. You thought this was, was a ball ring. Yeah, all of these, uh, these smaller tracks are really going to test all the drivers' uh, traffic management and uh, not just uh, forwards, but also backwards as well. Uh, mm. You know, we've seen, we saw a few of our maybe top drivers or drivers we expected a bit better of uh, dropping towards the tail end of the field and getting wrapped up with uh, lap traffic and all that sort of stuff. Um, during the pit sequence. So I think uh, what we said about maybe have going a lap down in the pits tonight might be a bit more of a reality at Simmons Plains. We could see a, a very mixed mid part of the race at Simmons Plains. So that's on the 1st of July. That's going to be great to look forward to. Uh, but as for now, I think we should wrap this up. Thank you, Michael, for joining me. And if you get any parting words for tonight? Thank you very much, Chris. Yeah, no, I was just really happy to be a part of it. And we saw uh, a few, a bit of a quiet race in terms of overall action. Certainly, uh, we saw more crazy action in last season. But I think it's a really good starting point for this hmm. series. And I'm really excited to see where it leads. Yeah, it wasn't crazy on track, but there were strategic plays. There was still some good on track action. There was carnage. All you could want for... There was a lot of carnage. There was a lot of carnage. We saw all the carnage at the end of the race. Yes. So that's... ATCC in a nutshell. We hope you enjoy it. Thank you to Brock for putting this mod together. Thank you to Netherealman. Nether How do you say it? For Netherealmian. 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 Which makes a lot more sense whatever I was saying. <laughs> for for the graphics tonight from Outward Broadcasting. And thank you everybody for watching. We'll be back in a couple of weeks' time. That's Michael Zavari. I'm Chris Riddell. Goodbye. Stream.